Hey guys, welcome to the 101 in 10, where you get to see your favorite artists from around the world, 101 in 10 minutes. I'm your host, Ayash Robertson, and I'm back on the scene with a new artist. I love this artist. He has this really different style. He's a performer. He's a singer. He's a songwriter. He's a musician. Um, he, his authenticity is very organic through his songs and through his lyrics, like you could really feel the emotion and the connection through his music. I thought it was great to have him on the show. Plus, he's also has this reggae twist to him as well, which I love. So without further ado, let me help welcome you to the show, Mr. Jordan Gills. Did I pronounce your last Gillis. name right? Gillis. Gillis. Uh, All right. Mr. Jordan yeah. Gillis to the show. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Should ask you that before we started. So, Mr. Jordan Gillis, thank you so much for being on the show and welcome to the one on one and ten. Can you please tell our fans how did you get started as an artist and also what were your musical influences? Um, so I got started uh with the guitar. Um pretty much uh I didn't sing at first, I actually started playing uh guitar first. Mm -hmm. And so um uh, friends of mine would be playing like Guitar Hero and stuff, and I wasn't any good at that. So um, I decided, you know, I, I didn't think it was that great anyway. So I, I said, let me go buy a real guitar. So me and one of my friends, we both bought guitars that day. And then I just, you know, the guitar was like this magical thing to me that I'd never seen. Because I'd never seen, been around instruments before that. So I'd never had any instruments or anything. So when I got the guitar, it was so cool to me. And I just kept playing it. And uh you know, one day I just decided that I would just take it really seriously and wow. just try to do music. Yeah. So, how old were you when you first started the guitar? I was actually relatively uh, late. I started at nineteen, so I was a full adult, and I never played any instrument or done music at all before that. Well, you can't yeah. tell. I mean, a lot of a lot of times I meet a lot of artists that's been like, you know in the industry since they were like four or five years old, their parents are creative talents as well. But you're like this self-taught gifted musician who kind of picked up the guitar at 19 years old. And for you as a late bloomer, but for me, it's just like, wow, like most people can't pick up, but I know I can't pick up an instrument and start, just start figuring out how to play it at 19 years old. So kudos to you with, I mean, being able to start from music as a musician and then develop the singing. So how did the singing come about? A part. Um, you know, it should have came about earlier, a little bit earlier, but my um, I just guess I it was at the time I didn't know I could sing, and I wish I had known I could sing, but I guess that was just my fault that I didn't know because I should have been testing myself. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but when I found out that um, you know, I kept being put in a situation where I was singing harmony, and I had another band actually where our lead vocalist let us down and bailed on a show, and so I had to front the uh, <laughs> front the band, and. And, um, you know, uh, the uh, keyboard player, guitar player, who's still, we're good friends now. He was like, man, you can just front this band. It doesn't matter. He's like, well, you can just front it. You don't have, to. we don't have to worry about him. And so after that, I just started singing and playing, you know, on my own and recognizing that I can do that and that, and embracing that I'm a, not, that I'm a performer. And that's naturally who I am as a performer and mm -hmm. uh, to embrace that, <laughs> you know, and not be ashamed about it or shy about it at all. So you know, that's, awesome. that's kind of how I got into singing, you know. That's great. Now, who do yeah. you embrace when you're on the stage as an artist? Like, what type of musical people you kind of influence and take from when you're given a, given a show? Oh, you mean like what art, like what artists in the past mm -hmm. are, are influencing me? So, um, well, I mean, my background is I grew up, you know, like a lot of, you know, young, um, you know, black people from black families. We listened to grew up listening to soul music, mm -hmm. and actually, my family was relatively strict. So my father, he didn't like hip hop actually. So we didn't have a lot of hip hop at first. Not until I got older, then I started listening. When I start, you know, listening to whatever I wanted. But when I was a kid, all we heard was older music, and it was mostly soul, and sometimes some older rock music too. But mostly like soul, so Temptations, Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, stuff like that. Um, so soul is like a natural influence mm -hmm. behind what I do, even though I, uh, then I have a big rock influence too on the other side, um, on the guitar, 
like I said, in, when I first started playing guitar, you think of guitar as like a rock instrument, even though it's in all kinds of music, including mm-hmm. soul and included. Mm-hmm. So um, I was learning like rock tunes. And so I had that hybrid influence of like rock music and soul music. So yeah, I would say that, you know, that's, I'm a hybrid of those two things, you know, and uh-huh. my, my guitar playing it can sound very rockish, but uh, my voice can sound soulful. And so it's kind of like a mix of just, you know, those two things. Yeah. That's nice because I remember years ago I had a colleague of mine who um, said to me that if she, she cannot, she can sing regular like classical music or maybe a little bit of some um, classic rock, but she was always so amazed how people could just sing that soul music. She said her her voice would like die if she would because it was just too far out of her range, and it was just the the great thing about your experience is that one, you didn't know you could sing, and two, your belt, your your front lead singer bailed out on you, and it totally shift your whole career as this musical artist. So if these things didn't happen, then you would have never known that you had this voice. Because I, I mean, like usually people tell you if you can sing or not, but I guess you weren't right. one of the people that were. Do up, do up, do up, do up around the house and things of that nature. So no one really ever told you that. So that is that's an unbelievable um, story to talk about as far as you know how everything kind of like unfolded for you together as you started down your musical path at 19 years old. That's awesome. Yeah, right. Like I mean, as a Jordan just froze a little bit, but he should be back. Yeah, he's just frozen just a little bit. He should be right back in a couple seconds. Go ahead. Sorry, I, I don't no, know what sorry. I meant. So, uh, Go ahead. Uh, but yeah, like as a kid, I would do little beatboxing and stuff like that, but nothing serious or anything. And so, uh, but I remember I wanted a guitar and my, uh, for whatever reason, I don't know. I, I, my, my mother wouldn't buy me one. I remember I saw one like in like the Walmart and I just saw, and I wanted it. I was like, hey, can I get that? And she said no. And then I, I bet if I had asked more and more, maybe I would have gotten it. Um, so I never, <laughs> I never got the guitar until I was 19, but, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, everything that bad that happens is like a blessing in disguise. In fact, um, I wouldn't even be playing music full time if something bad didn't happen because I was, uh, had this job, the only job real kind of steady job I ever had was, uh, working at UPS and I would load loading packages on in, in UPS. So, and I was good at it and they wanted me to be a supervisor. Right. So but my brother also worked at another UPS facility. Mm-hmm. And because of that, they had this weird nepotism rule that you couldn't be a supervisor if your brother was a supervisor. And I fought that and fought that until I got tired of it. Eventually quit. They wouldn't budge, even though the, everybody wanted me to be a supervisor. So when that happened, um, I didn't have a job. And then I just spent, I would pre- was practicing guitar like all day, like eight hours, 10 hours a day. Um, and then within like six months, I was uh, that's what I was doing full time. So had I never lost that job, never lost that opportunity to uh, to be a supervisor at UPS, I might be uh, driving a UPS truck or something, you know. So, but um, you know, now I get to play music and get paid uh, for that. So that's pretty cool. That's a yeah. wonderful. That's a wonderful story. Now let's talk a little bit. Can you tell me, since we're at the end of the year, can you tell me a little bit about your success for 2022? What are some of your success stories for this year? Um, the biggest success story was uh, this was very was really just me being in the right place. So uh, I actually um, I'm in the country right now, in the middle of nowhere, in a, a little a northeastern Alabama. So I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, originally. Okay. But um, and I was playing heavily, you know, five or six times a day and um, not a day but five or six times a week in Maryland when I was there so okay. I left all that behind it to uh, be in a place that I felt was better for me where they had um, 
more opportunities for players like myself, which is not here where I am exactly, but Nashville's not very far away. Mm -hmm. And neither is it neither is Atlanta either. So I'm mm -hmm. close to both Atlanta and uh Nashville. I'm like like right in the middle. So um I'm in a better location for what I do. And that's what I'm working on is trying to um you know work on that. So um I'm doing some networking now, getting established here, but that's we I made the move and also just the environment of where I am is just much better for me. So that move yeah. has been big. Yeah. Go ahead. What were you just saying, Jordan? You said I the said, move has been good. Yeah, that move has been big. And other than that, I just uh been re recording and producing songs a lot too. So I've been doing that a lot this year. That's so great. my biggest my biggest accomplishment is I stopped playing shows. That's the big the biggest accomplishment for 2022 is I took a break from it so that I could be in the right place and kind of start over as far as building up a reputation, you know, um, and getting uh, a reputation in that area. Like in Maryland, I, I play all the time, but here nobody knows me. So <laughs> that's my, that's what's happened in 2022. Okay, good. It seems like yeah. a lot of things ha or have already fallen in place for you. And it seems like the place that you're in it's conducive to your own energy and space and in and, and the creative process of creating these new projects for 2023, which I am looking forward to um, hearing and um, making sure we follow you on social media as well. Now, I want to ask you one more question now. I know that you have a couple of songs. I love the reggae song. I think it's called Overstand. Um, mm -hmm. How did you come up with that song? The, like the, like the creative process and what were some of the influences for that song? Um, the influence for how that song is that I was actually hanging out with um, a Jamaican person and they, uh, and they were saying, um, and in their Jamaican accent, they kept saying, yeah, try to over, try to overstand what I'm saying or something like that. And they kept saying overstand and not understand. And so that was like the first time I heard that word. And then I kind of would get used to hearing it. And so songs for me kind of come um are for, like i can i can force out a song but songs kind of just happen you know usually kind of just when they happen they happen a lot of them happen in like in a dream or something like that so um this one just developed over time i came up with maybe the chorus of the song and then um later on i added a bridge to it and till i developed it so it just kind of developed over time but the inf original influence of it was talking to somebody and them using the word overstand a lot and me understanding, overstanding what overstand meant and then making a song about it. <laughs> you know? I absolutely love how you just said the creative process just comes to you really naturally. You don't have to force oh. it. It just naturally comes to you. And that's when you feel that song overstand, it just feels very nice and relaxing and calm. And it has this flow of, uh, a very nice flow and softing type of beat and the energy in the song is really good. So guys, make sure you take check out his music overstand on Apple Music, um, YouTube as well, and Spotify, but he's on all musical platforms. So Jordan, can you tell the fans how they can book you for upcoming um, performances for 2023 or have you pro produce other people's music? They're looking for a producer. How can people get in contact with you? Um, you can find me on my website, uh, jordangillisband.com, um, or you can, any social media, Jordan Gillis Band at Instagram, Jordan Gillis um, on Facebook. Just look my name up and um, whatever platform you feel convenient to contact me, whether it's by email on my website or um, you can DM me, <laughs> whatever, whatever works. So. Oh, no. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, that all works. So you yeah. have heard it, guys. JordanGillisBand.com. We have the link at the bottom of the show. You can make sure you connect with him. Make sure you follow him on all social media platforms and make sure you get his music. So thank you so much, Jordan, for being on the 1 and 1 and 10. And happy holidays to you and happy holidays to the 1 and 1 and 10 fanners. Thank you so much for watching this edition. I look forward to seeing you on the next edition of 1 and 1 and 10. You never know. We might be coming to your town real soon. Bye now and take care.